Right. And she now suspects, as does the family, foul play was involved in his disappearance. You were close to Taylor. Yes, very close. Not? And actually spent time with him the day before he disappeared. We want you to uh, listen to this story. He um, was a member of this band, always musical. And yes. then what? Tell us a little bit about him. My brother was involved with the music, and then he decided to make some very big changes in his life. And he went back to school and ended up working at Northrop Aerospace on the inertial guidance system for the MX missile. Now, that's an unusual thing mm -hmm. for a rocker, if mm -hmm. you say whatever happened uh, to some of those rockers. OK. Anything that was unusual about what he was doing? Aerospace, but is it in any way secret or in any way? He had secret clearance with, okay. the, with the government, and he was involved in that. And then when the layoffs happened, um, my brother decided to start his own business in technology, and he married and, and started a family. Did anything seem unusual when you saw him uh, last? The day before I was with him, and um, we went and we were putting up real estate signs for, for Jennifer, his wife. And my brother was talking very strangely. He was acting very fearful and, and out of character and, and putting sacredness to everything. That evening, you know, I kept trying to call him. Finally, I got through to him and I said, Taylor, you know, I want to talk to you. And he told me, he goes, I'm fine. You know, and the last thing he said to me, he goes, I'm fine. I'm taking my family to, to dinner. And he said, and the last thing that he told me, he said, I love you. You know, because he, he's always very open emotionally. And so um, he, he hung up the phone after that. And then the next day, I tormented ever since her 22-year-old <coughs> son, you hold my hand, Jamie, was murdered five months ago. And that's, that's just a little bit of time in a child's life. Um, you say that Jamie had no enemies and he was the love of your life. Can, we, can you tell me about him? Well, he was, I had him when I was really young. I was 19 and uh, we sort of grew up together and I held him very close to my heart. He was everything to me. Now, your son was murdered this past May. What happened? Tell me about the day so that uh, Sylvia yeah. can help. He had gone to his fiance's house at 9 o'clock in the morning. He left there at about 11 as the last time that he was seen by anybody. He had left her his car because he was real athletic. He was going to walk back to my house, and he never made it home. I thought a missing persons report, and then they came. Um, five days later, they had found his body, and his body was so badly decomposed. They can't tell me what happened to him. So they could not do an autopsy. They did an autopsy. It showed nothing. Now, I have to warn people at home that the photographs are very uh, graphic. If you, uh, you, you may want to turn your head for a moment. Tell me, uh, you filed a report. Now, does he have any known enemies? No. No known enemies. What did they say was the cause of death? Undetermined. They left everything for me in an undetermined state, and that's how my life is, undetermined. Now, had he had an argument with a fiancé? No. None? No. You tell us that you've been obsessed. Oh, I, I'd live to find out what happened to him. I had no closure in my life. I had to have a closed casket. I didn't even get to see him. The, those now, I don't know how far the psychic mind goes back, but this has been 20 years. 21 years? 21 this year. Since her beloved mother was brutally <laughs> murdered, she is still haunted by what happened to her and actually she fears for her life. Uh, do I understand you don't want to have children because you're afraid of that? Part of, yeah. The, the whole setup of the entire family has been fear for their lives. Uh, and Susan was terrified to come here today. Now, this kind of 20-year fear, tell us where it comes from. Your mother was loved by everyone mm. and did not deserve to die so violently. She was also a confidant to everyone, too. Yeah, she was. was she? And <laughs> she knew a lot of secrets from everyone. And somebody that was connected to Mafia had told her a lot of secrets. I knew it. I knew it. OK, now take us back to the day of the murder. 
You said the day started out strangely. Yeah, I was, um, I was asleep, and um, I just, I don't know if you saw a picture of my mother. She's very beautiful, very beautiful woman. And I like saw this vision of her, and it was all black in the back. Her hair was all pulled back, and her smile, and she just said, Mija, your daddy did it. And I woke up, and I thought, what was that all about? And it just kind of stuck in my head, and I went in the room, and my mother wasn't there, and I just, this vision kept. Is this the time of day she'd be there? Yeah, there was a morning. It was, I think it was. She'd get the kids ready for school? No, we'd all get ourselves ready for school and stuff. Okay. Um, but it was, I think I woke up, bef I don't know if it was before 7, a little before 7, I'd set my alarm. I can't, the alarm hadn't gone off. I just, when I saw that. And mother would have been home. Yes, definitely. And she wasn't there. And I, I don't remember if I woke up my sisters or called my brother. I just like, where's mom? Where's mom? Kind of thing. And my brother had us go to school because he said, we'll find her. Mm -hmm. And so we called aunts, uncles, and such. And all day at school, I kept seeing this vision of what was she trying to tell. Chuck's beautiful four-month-old baby girl, Ariana. Ariana. Was killed senselessly just six months ago. And this is a story that has made the news and tore at our hearts. Oh. Chuck says that it has become his mission to find the man who murdered baby his baby God. daughter. Chuck, what happened six months ago? Your wife was returning from maternity leave, had just returned, am I correct? She was uh, back to work. It was her second day back. And she had just picked up our daughter from her mom's house, which was on the way home from work. Uh, she then got on the highway, and uh, at that point, the, the truck driver gave it the gas and tapped her in the rear and sent the car spinning into one tree um, where the, the car actually <coughs> spun, and the baby flew out the back window uh, 90 feet away. She landed on the other side of the exit oh. ramp, and, um, and the car then hit a second tree, and that's where it stopped. And... Um, from what the eyewitnesses say, they just saw a pink blanket flying through the air, and that was my daughter. <clears throat> when this happened, um, the truck driver, or whoever, was it a truck driver? Let's get on. Yes. Yeah. Stopped the car? <clears throat> he stopped his truck um, about 100 yards past the accident scene. Look back? Oh. From from what the eyewitnesses say, he stopped his truck and checked his rig for damages. And then went on. <coughs> and then, and went, then on. went on. And yeah, he, then he, he got, got in and his, went on. Exactly. He headed on into New York, and from there we don't know. Now there were eyewitnesses on I-95 between Connecticut and New York. Right. What did they tell you? Well, Connie, and she says that her world absolutely crumbled when her 20-year-old son Jimmy was found lying dead in his room with a garbage bag. It wasn't over his head, though. No, it's it? He was covering his eyes on the bridge. Just covering his eyes. The bridge of his nose. This happened very recently, just a few months ago. And I know that Jimmy was your only child. He was my only boy. And I know that you're suffering terribly. Can you tell us a bit about him? He's. Uh, 20 years old? He, he would have been 21 in June. And I had been in to visit him. I, 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 I couldn't explain it. I felt like I was, I was never going to see him again. Mm -hmm. when, I went to when he went to leave that morning and, uh, by the door, and, and I started crying. And he wasn't a real huggy kid. You know, He didn't like to be handled a lot. But he, he let me hug him, and he hugged me. We hugged so close and so tightly, and I held his hands in my face, and I said, oh, baby, I feel like I'm never going to see you again. You went home. I, I left on the 21st, and um, on the 22nd, which was Friday night, I had gone to Indiana to pick up my sister and my niece. And uh, I called Jimmy that night. I talked to him. And he told me that um, this guy had to offer him a job at a new body plant shop. Uh, it, during the month I was there, he was awfully worried about changing jobs. He wanted to work into a position where he would be trained. How did you know something had gone wrong, Connie? I did. I don't know. I, uh, 
I had the feeling when I left him, when I told him, I I said, I I've, 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 the mother thing. That's a psychic thing, a mother. So she and called and he wasn't I there. I called. And you called.